Tiamat lived up to its name, named after a Mesopotamian sea goddess. The 660-foot-long behemoth submarine, once armed with nuclear torpedoes, was redesigned to explore undersea wonders and carry tourists. Me and my wife had the honor of being among these tourists. For our honeymoon, Paige and I visited Hawaii. There we boarded Tiamat and began our journey along with 100 other tourists. The first few days were amazing. We saw sharks, whales, shipwrecks, and other marine spectacles. But we were most looking forward to the Mariana Trench. Very few people have visited Earth's deepest known point. Who knew what strange life and geological features we would see? As Tiamat descended, the blue around us grew darker and more eerie, eventually turning pitch black. The submarine's high beam lights were turned on, illuminating alien looking shrimp, fish, and octopuses. Tourists huddled around the windows to marvel at the bizarre world. The cabin displays showed the outside temperature and pressure. 34 degrees Fahrenheit and 1,000 times normal sea level pressure. Paige and I were astonished to see life in such hostile conditions. As we stared out the windows, a commotion broke out several rows back. Paige tapped my shoulder and I turned around. A group of people were gathered around the tourist lying on the floor near the lavatory. Somebody help my dad! The tourist's 12 year old daughter shrieked. We inched closer to the scene. The tourist had a laceration, oozing with black liquid on his right shin. As he sweat and trembled, foam blossomed from his mouth. Seconds later, his arms and legs violently contorted. He abruptly stood up, revealing milky white eyes and bulging veins. Growling, he reared his head at his daughter. We watched as he pounced. In the ensuing chaos, more passengers and crew members went insane. People began screaming and crying. However, we were stuck in a metal tube in an endless black void, seven miles below the ocean surface. Any kind of help would be many hours away. We wrestled through the crowd, seeing people getting bitten and pummeled. Blood and saliva splattered everywhere. We eventually made it to the emergency escape pod at the submarine's front. However, the latch was jammed. After a tense minute, Paige unjammed it. I looked back and heard a loud cracking sound. One of the windows buckled. A jet of water poured through, becoming more forceful within seconds. I stood there with my mouth agape. Andrew, we gotta leave now! Paige yelled at me. We hopped into the pod and started the engine. As we accelerated away, our headlights caught a glimpse of the hull near the busted window, caving inward. After four hours, we reached the surface. I gave Paige an endearing hug as a rescue team responding to Tiamat's distress signal found us. Just before the team helped us out of the pod, I noticed what appeared to be a blood-stained switchblade, a CCD worker card, and a biohazard symbol-marked glass vial peeking through one of Paige's purse pockets.